But yeah, are you so are you aware of what's been going on with him? Like the latest I'm 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 aware of I got a good enough grasp of what's happening. Right. So he got sentenced to two to four years in prison mm -hmm. um because of him violating his probation on like two separate occasions mm -hmm. or more than that actually. Mm -hmm. Um and you know what I have been seeing since all this has happened, there has just been a huge outpour of support uh, for him. You know, people talking about, you know, the whole free meat thing, you know, unjust crime and, you know, basically saying that, you know, Jay-Z came out and said that the punishment was harsh and heavy handed. Everybody is basically saying the same thing that he didn't deserve. He doesn't deserve it. And he got what he got. Um, and, you know, the judge is being unfair to him. He shouldn't be going to jail for this kind of stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't want to, you know, engage in righteous indignation um, and suggest that they're all wrong for saying that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. However, and I've noticed this a lot of times with rappers who get incarcerated, um, there's always the overwhelming outcry of support in favor of them talking about how they shouldn't be in jail or they need to be freed or whatnot. But I never really hear people talking about what that person did to put themselves in position to be in trouble like that. Right, right. Um, and I think that that speaks to us overall always resorting to victimhood. We always want to talk about what has been done to us instead of looking inwardly and taking accountability and talking about the air, the judgment calls that we made to put ourselves in that position. Mm -hmm. Because I think that if you make different decisions to not put yourself in that situation, you wind up not violating your pro probation twice and now you're looking at prison time. Mm -hmm. um, we do too much of this victim mentality thing where we're always talking about how everything is against us and we're the victim. Things have been done wrong to us. We've been wronged. Um, and I'm not saying that it needs to all be that. I just don't hear any of that at all. It's always about, it's about what has been done to me. And there's just an imbalance in terms of people saying, bro, you put yourself in this position. I'm saying, bro, you put yourself in this position because mm -hmm. you should be aware enough of your situation to know not to make this kind of decision because you could get in trouble. And so it's all good for Jay-Z to say, you know, that was too harsh but did Jay-Z go behind closed doors to me and say, bro, why are you speed racing on your motorbike in New York City or getting into situations where you're assaulting people in an airport? Don't do that kind of stuff. And we won't be sitting here talking about free meek. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, I, I, I say the, <clears throat> the, the outcry from meek. Meek has uh, a lot of fans, so, and he has fans. So, uh, for stands uh, to be posting stuff on their page, I don't oppose that. I, I oppose people who don't post about Meek Mill any other time. You don't share his music. You're not a, a firm Meek Mill person. But it's all of a sudden, it's, I mean, I get it's free Meek, but some people are putting this on their back. And they're writing this out. They're like, no, meat need to be free. This some bullshit. It is some bullshit. Because who the fuck is on probation for 11 years? Mm -hmm. Who has the same judge assigned to the same case for that long? Yeah. Is that not a conflict of interest? Right. By that point of time? So, of course, there's a lot of this stuff in this situation that does suck. And it doesn't make sense. Uh, and when it comes to being a celebrity on probation, still don't know how that shit works. I don't know how it works. Because you're doing drugs. <laughs> you're doing drugs. You're traveling. You got guns. People around you got guns and drugs. So at what point do you get busted? I don't get it. So it was a, it was a situation where they just had him on a string. Uh, you know, it looked, you know, I guess it's looking like whenever he's going to get off, it's always getting extended or some shit. It's just wild. And it's just, it was set up for failure, actually. And um, I, so I can see why people like myself who do like me um, and I do sympathize with that part. It's like, hey, bro, being in jail for 11 years but free sucks. Mm, yeah. That's not cool. Yeah. Having to P.O., having to piss, having to do all this stuff, yeah. that's not cool. And and I don't care what you did, the, you know, you, you don't probation for 11 years. 
All right, that makes sense. So, well, I mean, you know, they do stuff like that when they want to get you. So they'll put you on probation for that long, knowing that there's no way that you can stay a one exactly. for eleven years. And so, but my and my thing is, when you say and not you know, but it's when you say, hey, you put yourself in this position. I'm like, yes, you did, but fuck, bro, I am me, Camille, and. When I walk out the door, everybody knows I'm a fucking celebrity, bro. I get anything. Not to say that, whatever, whatever. But it's just that every day I can get into whatever. And I have a fucking bike. I'm about to ride this bitch. I done rode it before. Big yeah, whoop. Yeah, so, so, so you're rich. Take your ass somewhere where you can ride the bike, go not ride in, in the, New York City, ride in, in the, the streets. Bushes, don't flex. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, I get that, but you're fucking Meek Mill. You can flex. And you're going to flex for two to four years in prison. See, and, and that's the part where, again, bro, if that's the part that's bullshit. But I know it's bullshit, but <laughs> you have to know what you're I, doing. Yeah, I know, but. Because, yeah, you're saying, hey, I mean, see, you're kind of fulfilling your own prophecy because mm -hmm. you're saying. I'm meek, I'm finna do this because I'm meek, but you're meek and you're finna do this because you're meek is the very thing that has you in hot water no, to begin no, with. No, no, totally, bro. I mean, I get that, <laughs> but it's just, it's just one of those life cycles where you just got, you just got caught in that loop. So that decision to go do that wasn't a decision of, hey, I'm about to get on probation again and catch anytime. It's just that, hey, man, I did this before. You know what I'm saying? Uh, clearly, he's had to. I don't. I highly doubt that was the first time he did that. So it was just a situation where he was like, "Hey, I won't do this." And uh, you know, it is what it is, man. I think he's just a cat who, who um, he was just enjoying, he's just really enjoying himself, man. I just think it's a, it was a trap, and that's the part about it that I do sympathize with. I feel like it that is some bullshit, and it ain't cool, but. My thing is, is again with bandwagon people. It, it happened in sports, it happened in music, it happened anywhere. I mean, the fact that people were standing outside penitentiary. Well, it's not only that. Like you had that they they held a rally <laughs> in Philly for him. Uh, that I don't get that. I, I don't. But that's 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 what I'm saying. Like, what is this? Like we we do this too much, where we. And like we just we embrace victimhood. We have a victim mentality where instead of focusing on solution oriented ideas mm -hmm. um, so that we can pinpoint things going on to put us in situations in which we're not uh, potentially going to jail perpetually, um, we want to sit down and lament on racial and social injustice and talk about the justice system and how flawed it is and how it's engineered to target disenfranchised people. All of that stuff is true. Right. All of that stuff is true. However, all of that stuff will not change. Right. And uh, and uh, it won't change uh, by just observing. And I think that's the, the part that uh, humanity is coming to terms with. I don't, I don't know how the step programs work when it comes to recovery, but I know stage one is admitting it. And then, you know, you just move on. Yeah. And then, so <clears throat> when it comes to this victimization that you're speaking of, it's just more or less a, a condition that's been given to us through systematic training, uh, through uh, social engineering, mm -hmm. and through education, and uh, which is part of social media. But still, it's just they've, they've created this, this, this mind that only points at things. Even if we take it away from black people and we go into the political arena and not talking about all political people, but I'm talking about the majority of political people who just run their fucking mouth and, and vote. They vote now, but they just run their fucking mouth because if they actually did do something, their kids wouldn't be getting shot with vaccines. Yeah. Their kids would get a better education in school. So uh, white people do the same thing when they cut when we talk about this whole victimization thing. They just they 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 just talk about vaccines, or they talk about the GMOs, or they talk about the this or the that. All of these things that are working systematically against their people. So uh, they've trained Americans 
to only observe the problem and report it, mm -hmm. not to ha how to get on the ground and actively work. But they train you how to not do that in school. Yeah. And if they if we spent more time developing projects of our own, being uh, you know engineering things or doing stuff like that as kids, then at that point when we become adults and it's time for us to solve a life problem. We know how to systematically, step by step, achieve those things by writing down goals, achieving them, step forward, blah, blah, blah. But of course, we're not going to be able to change anything by standing outside of the penitentiary holding a, a damn piece of paper. But um, how do you get those people to get into the mindset of writing down a plan and grip gathering? Or you know, that's that's a whole dynamic that they're not ready for because once you impress that upon them. They're gonna all run and scatter. Mm -hmm. Hey, I went down to the show up places with stuff. Yeah. So you telling me to actually work? I got a job. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So they've created this this problem. This is the, the the problem that you're speaking of is not a problem that's just unique to black people. It's a problem that's uh, it's an American problem. Yeah. And so it's uh, but it's just that black people we only respond to our issues. Mm -hmm. But the part about this that is is still baffling me. Is that they're reacting so strong for a rapper? Yeah, and that's but but, but but that be well, yeah, <laughs> because we have chosen rappers to be the voice box for our masses. Right. We've done that. Like we we you and I individually didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Collectively, we as black people made the decision pretty much a long time ago that the individuals who are going to represent and speak for us. Are going to be rap stars. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure. I just like the and and I, I see your point when you're talking about how this is a American thing, mm -hmm. but the thing that separates it, the thing that makes it a unique distinction for Black people is when you know usually when Black people in you know when when when, when Black people embrace victimhood mm -hmm. to try and proclaim their status as a victim or to try and proclaim innocence it's always within the context of breaking the law and that's what makes it unique for us and it, it, that's what makes it more of a serious issue because you we can talk about the victimization of people in terms of you know pharmaceuticals and you know foods and all of that kind of stuff but that stuff isn't going to land you in jail the way the stuff that we do lands us in jail mm -hmm. and <clears throat> There's a give and take between there's a give and take between understanding that you play a role in your demise or lack thereof mm -hmm. and saying, yo, this system is rigged up against me. Because where the whole where I think that we end up looking like fools is when we proclaim that the system is rigged against us to fail, the system is rigged against everyone who doesn't have power to fail. Right. But we are in a position where because historically we've been so disenfranchised that we instinctively resort to victim mentality whenever we get caught up in trouble because a lot of what we're doing out here results in our being locked up. Yeah, man. I mean, but again, man, it's, it's just a, when we're, the people that feel so strongly about this have been fucked up before. Yeah, and they, yeah, and they've um, when you've been fucked up before, you know the system, or you know somebody that's gotten fucked up. So you know the system, you know the games they play, and so it's just a situation where everybody, because he is a celebrity, they are, they they feel his pain. Yeah, and so it, that's the only thing that we're witnessing. But again, it's just this the march. Is where I drew the line. You know, you you outside, why? But yeah, the it, the thing about it is, they're 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 doing all of this stuff, rallying for him as if he didn't do anything wrong. I don't know what he did, but, but you, you keep saying as if he did anything wrong. Honestly, unless he murdered a man, kidnapped somebody, stabbed them, raped them, he didn't do any of that. It was probably a drug thing or something silly having a gun. I don't know what yeah, it was. Initially, yeah, it was guns and, so and drugs. so that's not a big deal. That mm. is not a crime. So, yes, he did initially do something wrong, but even that doesn't even warrant five years of probation. 
So my whole thing is that this has gone on too long. And so, yeah, I agree with you. He did do something wrong, but it was a thing when he was, like Jay-Z said, like he was, when he was a fucking kid. He, come on, man. What the fuck? He's a kid in Philly. Of course he's got guns and drugs. He's trying to fucking live. So, not, not to say that that's okay, but when you wake up in that every day, some cats really got to do that. And I pass those cats every day on the street who was born into that and don't know that there's a life outside of it. So, so when you get to this, when you get to the place that he is in life, you still don't know that there's a life outside of that. No, now see the thing is with me, cause nah, man, cause he did a damn interview in his race. He got damn stars in the ceiling, so he's been to the other side. He's seen money. He's traveled the world. So Meek is in a different spot in his life, he's not that same spot when he was a kid. However, when you are a man of that stature, and you got your your job is to be a large ego. And the biggest ego wins. So he, there's being grounded and being a major superstar celebrity doesn't really equate well. So the thing about Meek is he's dating naked. He's fucking strippers. He out here. He doing his thing. He, he, he made that music. He's an <laughs> ex-drug dealer. He's with the boss. He's doing what it takes to be a rapper. And so I think the thing is with me is I hope that this wakes him up from the rapper thing. But again, man, you can't tell him nothing. You can't tell anybody any of this. Because first of all, he's going to get out of this. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he is. He's he going to yeah. get out of this. And, and, and more power to him if he does. Yeah, for sure. But like how, how many times do you keep doing this stuff? Like say, okay, so... He gets out of this, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say he gets out of this, and then he does something again to, to wind up back in the same position. We still going to be talking about how um, uh, it's not a big deal, and this is all bullshit. Like, is that still what's going to be happening? Uh, no, I mean... Like, how many times is one afforded the... How many times is one is one afforded that card where, you know, bruh, you know, I'm going to do me, let me do me. You know, you just stop targeting me. Stop targeting me. Like, how many times do you extend that courtesy to somebody before you just look at them and say, bro, you, you, like, you, mm -hmm. stop fucking up. Mm -hmm. Like, stop fucking up. Hey, man, I, I, I could say that for for him. Um, I, I mean, I don't know, man. And, and, and once again, let me just say, because, you know, I don't want it to seem as though I'm somebody who is indicting Meek Mill. That's not what I'm doing. Yeah. I am just pointing out a trend that I see uniquely with black people mm -hmm. where one of our champions, okay, because yeah. these rappers have become our cha they they're, are they're, champions. Like, people overseas, they perceive what it is to be a black American from hip-hop stars. Right. So they're not looking at black people on sitcoms, TV, or they're not, in the last video we talked about engineers and all that kind of stuff, they're not looking at that, they're looking at the rappers. Right. So, you know, these people who are the voice box for us, these are our champions. Um, you know, they have a unique position. They have a position in which they can actually help to sort of, you know, teach. And I'm pretty sure he's doing this because he puts his money where his mouth is. He donates to charities. He helps out not for profits and that kind of thing. He's not a bad guy. He's cool. Yeah, he's not a bad guy. And and you know, I, so I don't want to make it seem like I'm saying you deserve everything that you get because I don't think that. Mm -hmm. But overall, we tend to always embrace wholly the idea of us being victims of an ill-fated system. As and it is, it is an ill-fated system. But at the same time, we don't necessarily have to be in that spot all the time. I, I, okay, and this is, I'm going sh to share a quick story. I think I told you this before, but I was I was in the cab. I was on my way home from Atlanta uh, visiting my brother. Uh, had, I, had, I had some trees in the car, but I smoked that on the way up there. Didn't have nothing on the way back. Right. So I'm, I'm riding on the way back, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I have a, a headlight out, but it's a fuse problem. I just need to flick something and it comes back on. So I get pulled over, and it was like, "Hey man, you got a headlight out." And I showed him. I was like, "Blah blah." Oh, it's back on, man. I say, "Thanks, blah blah blah." Can we search your car? 
No, sir, thank you. You have blah, 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 blah. So I, I kept it moving. I, I kindly, respectfully said no. I did everything I was supposed to do. I walked out. I said, all right, thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got followed for 30 minutes. 